Welcome back to Inside Number 23, my little channel which is all about knitting and sewing and generally living the craftiest life possible. My name is Katie and you can find me almost everywhere online as Miss Lavelli, although I'm most active on Instagram. We also have a Ravelry group for the podcast which you can find by searching Inside Number 23 on the groups tab on Ravelry and it's there that you can get involved in giveaways, knit-alongs, all of that good stuff. If you're looking for show notes just check the down bar down below, that's where I leave all of my notes as to everything that I talk about today and if you want to contact me um, regarding anything to do with the podcast at all please do just drop me an email. My email is Katie at inside number 23.com and um, just a request if you try and message me on different platforms um, so Instagram direct message or Ravelry direct message the likelihood is that you won't get a reply from me there in terms of the podcast the best way to reach me is via email so please feel free to drop me an email and I'll get back to you as soon as I can I'm coming to you as always from Hertfordshire which is just north of London in the UK where I live with my husband Emrys our lovely little pug puppy Rolly and that is my spiel for the beginning of the episode. It's really really lovely to be back to spend a little bit crafty time with you again this week. For my all of my long-term viewers thank you so much for coming back again and listening to me rabbit on and on about what I've been getting up to over the past week and if it's your first week with us welcome. It's just lovely to spend some time with you this week and I hope that you enjoy the episode. We're in February, can you believe it? I'm a little bit overwhelmed that it's February already. Already. I'm one of those weird people who seems constantly surprised at the passage of time. <laughs> what can I say? I'm, I'm excited that January is finally over. It does always feel like the slowest month of the year and it's nice to be getting um, a little bit more light in the evenings and that type of thing. I'm British, we tend to talk about the weather and that type of thing a lot, so forgive me for that. <laughs> for the beady-eyed amongst you, um, you will have noticed a change in my overall demeanour this week. I have had a haircut and I've had my hair recoloured and it's this rather interesting bright burgundy red colour. Uh, for those of you who are long-term viewers of the podcast, you will have seen this hair colour on me before. I'm not quite sure how it's coming up on the camera, it looks a little bit dark, it's really quite bright red and vibrant in real life. Um, but this was the hair colour that I had when I started podcasting. I then kind of swore off dyeing my hair, didn't have it dyed for a very, very long time, went natural. And recently I've been looking back at photos of myself, particularly from our wedding when my hair was particularly vibrant, and I missed it. So I got it redone. And I'm pretty happy with it, although it's a bit of shock. Whenever I look in the mirror, I'm a bit like, oh, that's interesting. Um, but enough about my hair. We have a lot of other stuff to be talking about this week. Excitingly, the Wong Along has started, the Michelle Wong Along. Um, I am posting a knit along on this channel for the incredibly wonderful designer Michelle Wong, whom I absolutely adore. And it will be running throughout February, March, and April. And the idea is to knit one of Michelle's beautiful garments. And there's no pressure for kind of finishing up um, or getting a whole garment if you do fantastic but a lot of her garments are relatively intricate so mostly it's just about getting involved with one of Michelle's patterns and enjoying the process of knitting it. So I do have a chatter thread open in um, my Ravelry group now so head over for a little bit of inspiration if you want to get involved and yeah I'm really really excited to see what all of you guys are working on. Before I crack on with the kind of main episode, um, I do very excitingly have some prizes to announce this week. The Harry Potter Cal that I hosted in 2017 is now officially coming to an end. Um, I had a grand prize drawing all set up for the end of the year and then I never got it open um, in time to actually give you guys a fair amount of time to post your finished objects. For those of you who don't know about the Harry Potter cowl, it was basically a Harry Potter themed 
make along that happened throughout 2017 and um, anybody who knit um, six or more Harry Potter themed objects would be eligible for the grand prize drawing. So thank you guys for your patience in waiting for me to get these prizes together for you. Thank you all so much for getting involved. Honestly, it was such a joy um, looking at all of your projects and seeing how much um, beautiful stuff you guys created last year was an utter inspiration so thank you so so much for getting involved and I now have the happy task of announcing some winners from that. So I closed the threads this morning, all of the Harry Potter cow threads are now locked down um, and closed but I do have some prize winners that I drew at random um, for the three lovely different sets of goodies that I shared with you a couple of episodes ago. And so I have three winners to draw. The first winner was post number 91, who is Jill, Bertie and Poppet on Ravelry. So huge congratulations, Jill. Jill actually completed 12 different Harry Potter themed objects in 2017, which is incredible. So thank you, Jill. Uh, my second winner is Teresa, post number 132, Shooting Stars. And Teresa completed nine different Harry Potter themed finished objects last year. So congratulations, Teresa. And my final winner was post number 18, who is Rachel, Rachel Ravenclaw. So Rachel, huge congratulations. And Rachel also completed nine different Harry Potter themed finished objects. And I'm just really really excited for all of you guys please do drop me an email with your um, contact information and I will do my best to get your prizes sent out as soon as possible and just yeah thank you to everybody who got involved thank you to everybody who donated prizes for this knit along it's just been amazing and although I am a little bit Harry Pottered out, I'm sure that you can probably tell, it was an amazing experience and it was really lovely to have two of my greatest loves, knitting and Harry Potter, come together and be able to share that with you. So, yay! I think we should move on to a little bit of crafty content, don't you? Is that's what you're here for? Uh, I'm going to quickly talk about what I'm wearing this week in um, kind of respect and celebration of the Wong Along kicking off this week. I am wearing a Michelle Wong pattern for this episode. This is one of my favourite sweaters. Since I completed it, I wear it all the time and it is the Wickwork Pullover by the lovely Michelle Wong. I'm just going to hop up so you can see it in slightly better detail. Look at the gorgeous pattern on it. This is knit in Quince and Co Lark in the Honey colorway. I absolutely love this yarn. It's one of my all-time favourites and this pattern was an utter joy to work on. I actually started this sweater back in 2016 and um, towards the end of that year and finished it last year and honestly it's such a lovely squidgy gorgeous pattern and to be perfectly honest if you're interested in taking part in the Wong Along but are a little bit intimidated by some of Michelle's more complicated patterns this is a really really lovely one to get you started because although it looks quite intricate the cable repeat is actually pretty intuitive and it's fairly easy to remember exactly what you're doing and where it's not as complicated as it looks it just creates this wonderfully complex geometric pattern when you're done plus the sleeves are in stockinette so you do have a little bit of respite there but I love it it's a wonderful pattern and like I said it's one of my my favorite things in my wardrobe now Underneath, I am wearing one of my many versions of the Blue A dress by Deer and Doe. This is the version that was re-released. It's the new version of this pattern, which is the one that you can now buy. Um, the older version that I've made many, many, um, many, many dresses from uh, is discontinued. So this is the one that's now available. Um, and I really love it. It's in this um, poplin tartan, um, which I did with a contrast collar. And I got this fabric from Fabric Godmother. I also love this dress and I love how these two go together it very it speaks to my inner aesthetic I feel very much myself wearing this outfit so yay handmade outfit <laughs>
So what have I been working on this week? I hear you ask. I have been doing a fair amount of knitting this week, although I do feel a little bit frustrated because with some of my projects I'm very much in that place where they feel a bit relentless and like they're never going to end. Um, but that's only one of my projects. So I guess I'll start off with that one. And I'm sure that you can probably work out what project that is. It is of course my forest cardigan. Um, I over enthusiastically stated last week that I'm sure that I would have this finished by this week's episode. And yeah, that hasn't happened because I am in a ribbing black hole. The black hole of rib is where I currently say my residential address is. I live there and it feels like it's never ending. <laughs> um, basically, for those of you who haven't seen this project before, the forest cardigan is a really lovely oversized garter stitch cardigan with some beautiful um, cable detailing down the sleeves and it also has pockets. Let me just grab one of these pockets up you to see pockets with also having that amazing cable motif on them and in many ways this project has been wonderful whilst I was knitting all of the garter stitch it was such a mindless easy knit and it grew ridiculously fast my main tasks this week were blocking the cardigan as once you've done the main work on the body of the cardigan you block everything you then seam up your sleeves because they're knit flat basically out of the body of the sweater. Um, it's, it's, it's interesting in terms of its construction but you need to seam those. So those are all now seamed up as you can see um, and um, sewn in and I'm very happy actually with how they ended up in terms of the seaming. When it comes to um, seaming garter stitch I'm often a little bit dissatisfied with the results because um, Basically, the garter stitch ends up looking slightly skew with, but I'm relatively happy with how those seams are. So I've, I've shut down the perfectionist in me for these. Um, and also I sewed together the pockets. Now one thing that I would say, I am, I was so excited to knit a sweater with pockets because I like having pockets in pretty much everything. I'm one of those people who's obsessed with something. I automatically think that something is a hundred times better if it has pockets in terms of a garment. And I was really, really excited to knit this because of the pockets. And I must say, I'm a little bit worried about how they've turned out. Um, I think that what I should have done when I was knitting the pocket was to go down a needle size for this garter edge, because as you can probably see, it does gape a little bit. And that is slightly disappointing because I haven't even worn this cardigan yet, obviously, because I'm still working on it. And the lip of the cardigan is already gaping. It's also not in a position where I can kind of rip back and re-knit it in order to tighten it up just because of the way that you basically um, continued knitting. It's all knit into here, it's not a separate piece. So if I tried to start knitting it back, it would have just, it would have been a horrible, horrible thing. So I've tried my best when I was sewing the inner pocket in. So as you can see on the other side, there's this, this pocket patch um, that's all stitched down now, creating a nice pocket on the inside of the cardigan. I've tried to stitch it in a certain way that is adding slightly more support to the pocket, um, so hopefully it won't gape as much. And I must admit that since starting on the, the kind of the band, the front band, it's not a neck band because it goes around the entire cardigan, but since knitting on the band it's definitely supporting the pocket a little bit more but it is kind of curling and rippling out and I'm not very happy with how that looks so guys any of you who have a good idea as to how I can resolve this without having to rip out masses of stitches um would be much appreciated because I've already tried kind of um stretching it slightly and, and turning it in and sewing it so it's a little bit tighter but this stitch because it's it's garter stitch above cable it's automatically got more volume in it than the cable stitches below so I'm not I'm, I'm a bit clueless at this point so if you have any advice at all it would be much appreciated so 
Unfortunately, that is something that is bothering me a little bit. I'm hoping that by the time that this is finished and I'm wearing it, that I enjoy wearing it so much because I do look at it and think, wow, that's going to be such a lovely thing to wear, that the kind of gapiness of the pockets won't irritate me as much. Fingers crossed, because we all know I'm one of those people who does get irritated by, by my garments and then um, rips them all back. I am not going to rip back this cardigan. There is way too much knitting that has gone into this. It's a humongous piece. Ripping it back is not an option at this point, but I would like, after all of the work that I've put into it, to be happy with the finished article. That would be preferable. But anyway, <laughs> what what I'm in at the moment, I was talking about my black hole of two by two rib. Um, I am knitting the band around the entirety of the cardigan. I ended up picking up less stitches than is stated in the pattern because genuinely I have no idea how they would have picked up the amount of stitches that they were asking for. I think I ended up with about 15 less stitches than were asked for um, in terms of, of picking up and it's already huge. It's, it's, it's a gigantic thing. And I'm happy with how I picked up these stitches because I, I literally kind of picked up one stitch between every um, gap in my garter stitch. And I think if I tried to kind of pick up more, I would have ended up with a really irregular band. So I'm happy with having slightly less stitches to knit. And to be perfectly honest, it's been such a long process knitting this band that if I, if I had had any more stitches, I would have probably gone mental by now. But um, but yeah, it's I have to knit four inches of band around the front. And I'm, I'm getting there. I think I'm at about three inches right now. And so that's another inch to go. And I'm trying my best just to plow through this and get it finished. Because the problem is, is that I do have a lot of other projects that I would love to work on. But I want this off the needles and done so that it's not kind of looming over me anymore. Much as I love it, much as I think it's a beautiful pattern, it is... I'm kind of at my wits end with it now. I want it off the needles, I want to cast it off, I want to re-block it so that I have a lovely flat band around the front and then I just want to wear it because I think it will be lovely and wearable. But my goodness, if I have to knit much more on a two by two rib, I, I will go nuts, I think. <laughs> um, I've totally forgotten to talk about the actual yarn I'm using. Um, I've just been rabbiting on about the pattern particulars and my own frustrations, but this is knit up with Knit Picks, um, Wool of the Andes Tweed in the Autumn Heather colorway. People have been asking me if this is a superwash blend. This, I believe, the tweed is not superwash, but it obviously has a small acrylic content because of the neps in the yarn. Um, but I don't think it's superwash. Um, I checked online and it was a little bit vague, to be honest. So at this point, I'm not entirely sure, but it is just the Knit Picks um, Will of the Andes Tweed. So if you go onto their website, you can see the full details of it. Maybe you can tell more than me whether or not it is superwash, but I am very much loving it. I want the finished object and I am crossing everything that it will be finished by this time next week. Please, 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 please. I can't, I can't have another week of the majority of my knitting time being on a two by two rib. I just can't. <laughs> but I have had um, a little bit more um, kind of fun knitting in the meantime, um, not just kind of mindlessly knitting on my forest cardigan. Um, to kind of give myself a little bit more intrigue, I have been working on a project which is ultimately more exciting and more complicated and obviously because we have started the Wong Along you will know what project I have been working on if you've been watching the podcast for a little while and it is of course my row cardigan by Michelle Wong. Look at these cables. You know I was talking about intricate cables earlier. My goodness this project has cables for days and I love it. I love this pattern so much. And I must admit it does require a fair bit of brain energy. It's not mindless knitting by any stretch of the imagination. Um, but I've made a pretty good dent in it this week. It is growing. 
I'm at the point where this is obviously the back piece. Lovely, beautiful, oversized cardigan this is going to be when it's finished, but this is the back piece. And I'm knitting, I think, three different cable charts up to a certain length. I think it might be something around about 18 inches. And I think I'm relatively close. I think I'm about three inches away. But obviously a row on this is, it takes considerably longer than a row on say my um, forest cardigan because of the complexities of the cable charts that I'm using. And I must admit the more that I do them the more they're kind of becoming more intuitive and, and feeling more simple but um, I have to make sure that I'm keeping a really good record of everything that I do just because I'm, I'm at the point where I'm at different rows on multiple charts which change all the time and yeah, it's, it is complicated. <laughs> you do have to keep your wits about you, that's for sure, but it is such a beautiful thing and as you see it grow and just these patterns emerging, you can't help but just fall in love with it. I adore this. Um, it helps that the yarn is utterly beautiful. Um, the yarn is Brooklyn Tweed Shelter and this is in the Truffle Hunt colourway, Truffle Shuffle colourway as I like to call it, which is this incredible grey which is also navy blue and brown and so many other gorgeous colours and I love how this yarn feels when I'm knitting with it. I know that it's going to block beautifully and all in all it is a dream project. I can't wait for this to be finished because I know that I will adore wearing it and I will feel like it's such a showstopper when I do but I also just love working on it. It is one of those beautiful projects that is 100% a product and a process knit at the same time and that's a real rarity for me because I'm usually very much one or the other. My forest cardigan for example is 100% a product knit now and I just want it finished. This I can't wait for it to be finished, but at the same time I'm loving knitting on it so much that I don't resent the fact that it does take a while for it to, um, to get knitted up, so hooray. Um, as always, my little um, pumpkin progress keeper on here, look at his little happy face, um, is by Jiggles and Beans, and for anyone who doesn't use progress keepers, and I know that they are maybe a little bit of a Marmite thing, um, you either love them or hate them, or perhaps not hate them, you're just a bit indifferent to them, but I would say if you are new to cables, and you are working on, say, one of Michelle's patterns that's very heavily cabled and you feel like it's not really going anywhere very quickly, a progress keeper can be a really, really lovely thing to have just because it automatically shows you the amount of work that you've done. So even though something may not feel that it's growing very, very quickly, you can see that you've made some progress. Maybe that's why they call it a progress keeper. Um, but I love it and it, particularly Jiggles and Beans. I'm not sponsored by them in any way or affiliated with them. I just love her progress keepers. I think they're great. Um, and it just makes me smile whenever I see it there. But yes, this is another project that has been getting a lot of love. Um, both of these knitting projects, I'm happy to say, are on my make nine list for this year. So um, I'm, I'm plowing through the list as quickly as I can and I'm very, very happy with it. That one's living, by the way, in my kind of Hammer Horror project bag, which I made for myself. I love this project bag. I've got a real thing at the moment for giant project bags. Um, I just love them um, because I'm making so many big sweaters and large projects. I don't actually have many giant bags, which is why I use this one all the time. And it's particularly fabulous because of the Hammer Horror element. So everyone's a winner. I do have a new cast on this week. I feel a little bit cheeky having a new cast on because I still haven't started the sleeves for my Chana, Chana, Chana sweater that um, hasn't been worked on for a few weeks and I really do want to get that started this week. But I was kind of <laughs> being driven mad by the two by two rib on the forest cardigan and I wanted something small and portable because my forest cardigan had been my commuter knitting, very, very much so, um, and I can't take the row 
on a commute, just because I have to lay my charts out, I have to keep track of where I am, I have to make a lot of notes, and I like to be kind of comfortable and at home, or at least, you know, if I'm going to take it with me to work, know that I'm gonna have my lunch hour to work on it rather than doing it on the train. So I wanted something a little bit smaller and more portable, um, and I didn't really have any projects that filled that criteria, um, so, I cast on something new <laughs> and I don't feel guilty about casting on something new because it is one of my make nine for this year so I feel that I can I can totally have this project cast on and it's not a problem and I actually kind of have a ho a half finished object I'm so excited about this um it's been a few days since I've taken this out and just getting it out is making me so happy and that is my Selby mitten is this not the prettiest thing you have ever seen? So this is old news. Everybody has knit one of these pretty much. I think everybody and their brother has knit one of these and their mother and their uncle and their father and their dog. And it's just such an amazing pattern. This is by my lovely friend Ellie of the um, Skained Ear Knits podcast. Skained Ear, Dr. Skained Ear, as I like to refer to her, but she created last year an absolutely beautiful collection of mittens, the Selby Mitten Club, and this was the first instalment in that. And I've completed the first mitten. I'm just putting it on. It hasn't been blocked, and it's a little bit tight going on at the moment, but from what I gather, that's actually a good thing when it comes to mittens, because it is gonna grow a little bit when I block it, so I'm pretty sure after it's blocked, it will be a perfect fit. But this is the mitten on my hand, and I love it so much. I love this detail on the back. I've also got the thumb in it already. Um, I watch Ellie's podcast all the time, which I'd really recommend if you haven't watched it, because she's just, she has the most wonderful voice, and I love listening to her. I could genuinely listen to her talk about anything, but the things that she does talk about, she is so well-informed and articulate that you will want to listen to her anyway, because what she's saying, as well as the way that she's saying it, is just superb. So, yes, she is wonderful, but, um, I know that she often says that it takes her a long time to put thumbs into her mittens and they tend to be like little orphan mittens without thumbs for a long time sometimes so I didn't want to fall into that trap mostly because I knew that it would be like putting heels into um, afterthought heel socks and just how I never do that so before I even cast on the second one I made sure that I'd got my thumb and I really love it. I love how the pattern continues on the inside of the thumb that matches the palm. Um, so yes, this is my first colour work project of this year. I do want to knit up pretty much every single one of Ellie's mittens because they are so beautiful. And um, I love this yarn. Is it not just beautiful? I know that it's not particularly high contrast and that the best thing for colour work is kind of high contrast but the grey and the burgundy together just make me so happy. I love how they look, and it's very much my kind of personal style and aesthetic, this colour um, combination, so I am very happy with this. So this yarn I purchased at Wild and Woolly, it's Navia Trio, and as far as I know, it doesn't actually have um, colourway names, it's just the kind of the darker grey that they do and the burgundy. And I love this. I love it. I really want to block this. I have got some um, foam board now, so I'm going to cut that out and block these. Um, but I have started the second one already. And here it is. Ta-da! So I've started my second cuff. And I'm already feeling more confident in terms of the floats in my knitting. I think that everything is a lot smoother with this second one than it is with the first one. I think just comparing how they look, I mean, let's be honest, you can't really tell from this that they look different, but I can tell. I think you can tell that this is slightly smoother than this one. But I'm also hoping that it won't really matter because it's a lot of it's going to come out in the blocking. But... I love it. I love it so much. And I do think that a lot of the problems that I've had with colour work in the past, with, with struggling to really connect to colour work projects, has been the weight of yarn that I'm using. A lot of the time I've used fingering weight yarn for colour work. And this is um, a DK weight, I believe, but it's lovely and hefty and produces this gorgeous kind of fat, um, sizable 
project that just feels really indestructible and I know that it will keep me ridiculously warm when I wear it so I am incredibly happy with this as a naughty little cast on project that I shouldn't really have cast on because I have so many other things on the needles um it knit up so fast literally I completed this and started this in less than 48 hours that's how quickly they knit up so I'm very very happy and I'm very excited to see how this mitten changes after blocking because I think that's going to be fun as well. I do need to weave in my ends obviously but I'll weave those in, I'll give this a block and continue working on my second mitten and I'm just, I love it, I love it so much. One other thing I wanted to show you before I move on to a small sewing project that I've been working on is the bag that my mittens have been living in because this arrived this week and I absolutely love it. This was a very, very generous gift from lovely Sophie of Pixie Yarn and hilariously um, a lot of people have actually sent me links to Sophie's um, Instagram site with her details because she we're sewing with this gorgeous fabric because look, puggies! Oh, look at the little pugwins! I just, I love this fabric and everybody who has seen it has obviously known that it would be something that worked for me because I swear about four people have sent me a link to Sophie's website. But lovely Sophie got in touch and asked if she could send me one of her project bags and I love this. It's got this lovely cube shape to it which is really unique and it's a drawstring, which is really fun. But from what I can gather, it is designed for two at a time sock knitting because I'm just gonna pull my project out of here so I can show you the inside properly. It's divided into compartments inside. So you can, if you're doing two at a time socks, you can pop one skein of yarn in here, one in here, and then it also has these little poppers which you can thread your yarn through and then just knit without your yarn getting tangled. I think it's a revelation and it's actually been really great for my colour work um, because although I'm not doing two at a time socks, I am using two different skeins of yarn for colour work. So I have been kind of putting those in each of these different sections. I haven't clipped them in because um, because this is a little bit more kind of toothy yarn, it tends to stick to everything, so it needs to have as much mobility as possible in order for it to come smoothly out of the bag. But it's also got a little zipped pouch in the center, so I can put things like stitch markers in here, or um, I've got a little, um, little needle holder, stitch holder rather, so I can pop my thumb stitches on there when I get to it. And, I absolutely love this. You can also use these to kind of pop it around your wrist if you're knitting on the go. So it's really great for commuting. It's been an absolute joy to have this on the train with me um, and to be knitting on, on my mittens from it. So thank you so much, Sophie, for sending this. Um, I will pop the details of her shop um, down below um, in the show notes. And yeah, get one of these, particularly if it has the puggies on it because it's, it's marvellous. <laughs> I do have one small sewing project to share with you this week um, and it's a little bit crumpled because it has been kind of transported around and I haven't yet given it a press since I brought it back from work but not surprisingly um, I have finished another Clio dress so I shared this with you um, I'm not sure if it was last episode or the episode before but fairly recently I had been sewing up this version of Clio by Tilly and the Buttons. This fabric is a very fine needle cord fabric that I purchased at John Lewis in one of their sales and it's covered in these really cute little stars. I think it is adorable. Um, I really really love how it looks and I think it's really sweet as a little Clio pinafore dress. Um, in terms of construction, it's very much the same as the other versions that I have made and shared with you previously, so I'm not going to bore you by going into huge amounts of detail about it, but I would say um, I cut this at the longer length, um, there are two lengths in the pattern, there's a mini skirt length and a knee length, and I cut it at the knee length because um, my previous versions have been a little bit short, um, but this also ended up being too long, so I did need to take a significant amount off the hem, and it's got a relatively um, chunky hem on this, but 
I'm very happy with how it looks. Um, it's such a sweet thing. I love the Clio dress and I live in these at work. So I know that it will be something that I use a lot. The one thing that I would say that I wish that I had kind of known before I use this fabric for this dress is that Clio really does work much better if you use a heavyweight fabric. So a heavier um, cord, so like a full corduroy or a heavy denim or just something that's got more structure and holds its shape a little bit more. Because although this needle cord is relatively um, structural, because it's so fine, it does tend to lose its shape a little bit, um, which isn't as flattering as it could be with this pattern. So I think I may need to do a little bit of alteration in the side seams just to make it fit a little bit better because it does tend to ripple and it also does crease quite a lot, which isn't ideal. But this is the third version of this Clio that I've made. So to me, it's not the end of the world that it's not the most super ball wear super wearable, super ball wearable. <laughs> It's not the most super wearable version of it that I've made. I still love it and I still have another version that I have cut out and ready to sew up. Um, so, so yeah, that is what I finished in terms of my sewing for this week and I'm going to give this a press and it's going to go straight into the wardrobe. So that's a really nice thing to have another dress finished. Um, Tilly and the Buttons also released a full dungaree pattern recently, which I'm very interested in sewing up. It's Mila, um, because as you will know, I haven't actually really sewn trousers. I've sewn one pair of trousers before, um, and Mila looks beautiful on pretty much anyone. So maybe rather than making a hundred versions of Cleo, I might add a Mila actual full dungarees to my wardrobe soon. But you will know I have so many other projects to be getting on with that goodness knows when that will happen. <laughs> So to finish up this week, I actually have a couple of stash enhancements to share with you and I'm really excited about them. Um, I haven't purchased yarn for a little while. I know that I've been very much focusing on um, knitting from stash and that's been going really, really well and I'm incredibly happy with that. Pretty much every project that I'm wanting to work on is using yarn from stash. And I'm also bit by bit, like my Clio dress, kind of taking sewing projects out of my fabric stash, cutting them out, taking them to work, doing a bit of sewing on them every couple of days and working my way through there as well. So I'm really happy with how that's turning out. But I realised that something is going to be released fairly soon and I'm not prepared in terms of the type of fabric that I would need if I need to kind of sew anything up from this particular release. Very excitingly, um, Tilly and the Buttons will be having a new release soon. Um, for those of you who don't know, I work as part of the Tilly and the Buttons team and very excitingly Tilly will be releasing a new book. She's already released the cover of it on um, Instagram and her first book, Love at First Stitch, is one of my favourite sewing books. If you're new to sewing I'd really 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 recommend it. Um, and also, can I just say, I have always been a huge fan of Tilly and the Buttons and their patterns and everything before I started working there. Um, so these are always my opinions. I'm not sponsored by them even though I work for them. I just really love the patterns. <laughs> so um, take that as you will. I just think they're great, particularly for beginners. And Love at First Stitch is very much geared towards people who are starting to work with woven fabrics and um, it takes you through the whole process of becoming more of an adept seamstress. Um, Tilly's newest book is called Stretch and it's all to do with sewing with knit fabrics. So fabrics that have flexibility as opposed to woven fabrics which are a lot more kind of stiff and stay exactly where they are. So I've, I've realised that I don't actually have a huge amount of knit fabrics in my stash. The fabrics that I have in my stash that are knit fabrics are all earmarked for very specific projects that I want them to be those projects. I don't want to use them for anything else. So I have been having a little think and a little bit of a browse online and I found some really, really, really gorgeous knit fabrics recently that I just couldn't live without. So I decided to treat myself. Um, because I want to be prepared for when the book comes out that I will have some lovely things to choose from. So, first of all, 
I actually made a purchase at a new online website that I haven't used before, which is so, 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 um, and all of these I'll put the details down below, and I've made purchases from all of these places, but I'm not sponsored by any of them. And my opinions, as always, are my own for everything. Let's just say that as a blanket for everything, I, I will always be honest with you guys, I hope you know that, but I am a huge fan of this fabric. I've actually seen this fabric print in um, lots of different weights of fabric. I've seen it in cotton lawn fabric, I've seen it in scuba fabric, and recently, very excitingly, I have seen it in jersey. Now, jersey is more of a lightweight knit fabric, so it's great for things like t-shirts and um, like dresses, and I love this fabric print. Now, for those of you who may be a little nervous of, of snakes, you might want to bear that in mind. I know that some people don't like being, being shocked by snakes and also a couple of insects there are on this print. They are, I think, very pretty, so I hope that they won't freak anybody out, but just so that you're aware, I don't want to give anyone a nasty shock. But this is the print of the fabric. Is this not amazing? This is pretty much the world that I want to live in in terms of a fabric print. I love it. So the background is black but then on the top it has this beautiful collection of multicoloured flowers which are gorgeous but kind of dotted in amongst them. There are butterflies, there are butterflies and moths which are beautiful but they also have little teeny snakes and a couple of beetles and just just really gorgeous natural things in here and it's such an incredible print and I was so excited when I saw it in this jersey because um, nice jersey prints I think are a lot rarer than prints on um, woven fabrics and to see something this beautiful on jersey just really really excited me. So this will definitely be, be becoming some kind of dress, um, I'm not entirely sure what just yet but I love it and I, I would love to get this fabric in pretty much any weight. I'm very, very tempted to try sewing with scuba weight fabric because I've never used that before. But to see this in Jersey made me finally bite the bullet and I was very, very happy um, because in terms of how I've seen this fabric priced online, it was very reasonably priced on the website that I got it from. So everyone's a winner. <laughs> The other two fabric purchases that I made were a little bit naughty. I probably should have just bought one of them rather than both, but I just couldn't pick between them. And these were purchases from one of my favourite online fabric suppliers, uh, which is M is for Make. And those of you who remember my foxy lady dress, which was my first version of the Blue A dress, will, will know M is for Make um, in terms of their beautiful, beautiful fabrics. But recently, um, originally she pretty much solely stocked woven fabrics. But recently she has branched out into a variety of knit fabrics and she just has such a beautifully curated collection of fabrics on that website. Honestly, I adore it. So I'd very, very much recommend that you head over to M is for Make, um, as long as you're not scared of your wallet being considerably lighter after your visit. But she had a really lovely selection of French Terry fabric on her website, which is basically a kind of medium weight knit fabric that usually just stretches in one direction. Um, so rather than stretching, jersey fabric tends to stretch both vertically and horizontally. French terry usually just stretches horizontally and um, it's slightly lighter weight than full on sweatshirt fabric but it's made in a similar way that toweling fabric is made, in case you find that interesting. But she had a lovely selection of different kinds of French terry and I actually ended up picking up two because, oh my goodness, this makes my heart so happy. Basically, the way that this fabric is done, it's a solid color, so this is this gorgeous like midnight blue, very, very deep navy blue but on the top, painted onto it with this kind of metallic texture are all these gold little sprinkles that kind of almost look like cookie sprinkles. I love this and I love that they have a little texture to them and that they are golden, 
beautiful metallic. Yes, there is a fair amount of pug hair on this because that's the life that I lead. Everything's covered in pug hair, but this is gorgeous. Oh my goodness. I, I just, I love it. And it was even more beautiful when I unwrapped it than it looked on the website originally. So yay. But there was also another colorway on the website that is slightly different for me, but really just spoke to me. And that is this gray. And I don't know if you can see because it's getting a little bit blown out, but those are tiny little pink metallic dots all over it. And I love this. Now, both of these um, obviously uh, don't have specific projects planned for them just yet. But this fabric is so good because it's so kind of soft on the inside. You can kind of see the texture of it there. That it could be like a sweatshirt or a sweater dress or this kind of fabric would be great for a cocoa dress, for example, because it would look beautiful, but it would just be so snuggly to wear. So both of these fabrics, I imagine will end up as being some kind of sweater or sweater dress and I just love them. I'm so happy with both of them. Um, I think this one will probably end up being something that I usually wear more around the house um, and this one will be something that gets worn out because I love it. I love it. It's so pretty and yeah so I treated myself but I'm very very excited and it's also nice to kind of feel like I'm filling a gap in my stash rather than just adding to it aimlessly and um, supporting smaller businesses which I really really love to do so so yeah don't forget to check out both of those websites if you want to treat yourself to something beautiful and fabricy. Well guys that is pretty much everything from me this week. Um, it's been it's been pretty full on. I did end up getting a lot more done than I thought I did. I always end up at this point at the end of the podcast where I'm like, wow, I actually I actually feel like I achieved something this week. Um, but thank you so much for spending another bit of crafty time with me. If you have enjoyed the video, um, hit the thumbs up if you want to, or hit subscribe so you can be kept up to date as to when there are new videos on the channel. Um, I'm very excited. I have some fun things planned for the next couple of weeks in terms of additional footage, um, naming no names my husband Emma Matthews will probably be making an appearance in an additional little extra episode soon so if you enjoyed when Emrys used to come and take part in general waffle keep your eyes open for that um, um he is missing the podcast and um I've missed having him here so that will be fun and also some other fun bits and pieces are kind of in the works so Yay! But for now, from me to you, I hope you all have an incredible week. Um, please use the hashtag WongAlong for the Michelle WongAlong <laughs> um, because I'd love to see what you guys are working on. Um, and yeah, I just hope you have an incredible week filled with crafty goodness and I will see you all again really, really soon. Bye!